up as a freshman because of the injury to Kyra Elsie. Tamika Ketchings has already broken the freshman scoring record of Shamiqua Hoslaw. And Shamiqua Hoslaw, everybody saw her last year, and they're seeing another great year from her this year. And a lot of it has to start in the backcourt with their point guard, Kelly Jolly, who's doing a tremendous job controlling the offense in the sense that she doesn't always have to score a lot of points for this team, but Pat Summit has told her to step it up in the tournament and look for her shot, and she can score. Well, while Tennessee has the Meeks, Alabama's got the Neek, and they do need her to score a lot. Dominique Canty, who was the SEC MVP tournament two years ago as a freshman, and if Shamiko Holslaw is not in the SEC, this kid probably is the SEC player of the year. She's a great penetrator, likes to get to the basket, and she is going to be tough to stop. She had 30 against Tennessee last time. We'll see what happens today. She only had three in the first half last night against Florida, then exploded in the second half. Alabama, the only team to hold Tennessee to a single-digit victory. They're hoping for more of that and a possible upset today. We got into leather for $8. I tried on some Revlon for 12 bucks. <laughs> what? At Ameritrade, we never forget it's your money. That's why we built our business on bringing you fast, accurate trades and... On the line in this building today. And let's check the Pert Plus starting lineup. First for the defending national champions of Pat Summit. Jolly Randall holds claw catchings, and LaShonda Stevens doesn't get a lot of ink, but she does a lot of the dirty work down low. And for Rick Moody and the Crimson Tide of Alabama, Mills, Cottle, Caddy, Goss, and Brittany Ezel, who is their leader and uh, the inspirational spark plug out there, averaging 11 points and six and a half assists a game. And against South Carolina in the quarterfinal, she had a 19-point outing. There she is already with her troops around her. What makes her so tough, too, is, is the leadership quality that she brings to this Alabama team, just as Kelly Jolly does to Tennessee. She's a versatile athlete. You look at her and you think, oh, she's not that quick, but she plays on the Alabama softball team. She's also been asked to play on the soccer team, and she is the coach out there for Rick Moody. After watching Duke in North Carolina yesterday, she reminds me of the female version of Steve Wojciechowski. Maybe not the most gifted, but definitely the leader. There she is and her numbers. Well, with players like that, you can't teach heart. Absolutely. Rick Moody's done a wonderful job with this team over his stay now in his ninth year with 197 wins, but there's a big offer right there on the bottom against Tennessee. A lot of people have an offer against that woman, Pat Summit. Maybe the best there's ever been in this game. And uh, after making the cover of Sports Illustrated, talking about the only coach ever to have more titles was Coach Wooden with 10. Pat's got five. Well, I asked her about that SI jinx, and she said, hey, Michael Jordan's been on 42 <laughs> times. You tell me. I know one thing. It didn't bother him against Vanderbilt last night in a 106 the 45 victory over a team that about three weeks ago was ranked sixth in the country. That's Alabama with the ball first, and here's Kenny on the wing. Talked to Rick Moody this morning at practice, and he was saying, we'll do the same thing. We'll take the air out of the ball, slow things up. You cannot run with this Tennessee team. Mills missed on a turnaround. Rebound comes off to catch him. But he also knows that they have to make their baskets. They've got to make the big plays. We mentioned that regular season meeting was 73-66. That's as close as anybody has stayed with the Lady Balls. And the rebound off the miss by Tasha Mills. Mills has to be a presence inside. Last night, she didn't have the greatest of games. She's a good rebounder. Her last 15 to 16 games, she's been in double figures, not including that game last night. This is where Ezell is so tough. We talked about Dominique Canty being a penetrator. Brittany Ezell loves to go to the basket. And what's so good about her is she creates contract. A lot of point guards are out of control. They're looking to pass the ball. Ezell will pass it, but she'll look to get the foul. She sets Kelly Jolly up, goes to the right side, and watch her go right in. She does a little ball fake to the outside, but she gets to the line an awful lot. And she's got the first point of the ball game. 5-5 senior out of Franklin, Tennessee. So playing against her home state's team. And she's got both free throws. 2-0, Alabama. 
going to see, we've seen all season long, like the type of team that they run it up and down the court. A lot of that is initiated by their defense and also their rebounding. Those are two keys that have some of this talk about all season long. Here's Randall. She's going to take it outside. Her rims out, and Mills has back-to-back -back rebounds. You see a lot of teams, boom, they get a great defensive board, and they like to kick it out and go. But they know Tennessee is a good transition defensive team, and they want to get Tennessee, get their opponents into a running game. Which Alabama is not going to take the bait. Trying to penetrate. Got a 13-footer, a little strong. Rebound. Comes off the whole squad. She's going to bring it herself. Got a little deep on the baseline. Rebound off to Alabama. Ezell's going to take it himself from the free throw line. And Stevens all alone for the rebound. Good shot. Those are kind of shots that the community says are going to have to convert. Both teams 0 for 3 from the floor to open things up. Oh, what a jump shot. Oldsglaw at 25 last night and 22 in the quarterfinal win over Mississippi State. It's tied at a two. The one thing I really like about her game the last two nights is the fact that she really let the game come to her. She didn't force anything. She did not do things outside the offense and was not hogging the ball, which is a very unselfish play. Ross in trouble. Way out court. Needs some help. Ten on the shot clock for Dominique Candy. Tries to work it to the baseline and a charging foul. Samika so Randall told me before the game, she goes, Pat gave me an opportunity to redeem myself in this game. Dominique Canty had 30 points against Tennessee the last time they played. And Randall, they really worked on practice today and positioning because Canty really likes to penetrate to the basket. They said, take, better take the outside shots. Let's cut off the penetration. Tennessee works the perimeter. Inside. Jolly is fouled. And she's going to go to the free throw line. Ezell's first personal. And for Alabama, you don't want their key players to get into foul trouble. Mills did foul out of the game last night. And Ezell and Canty, their top three players, if you want to call them Meeks, on this Alabama team, they can't afford to be out sitting on the bench. Tennessee with its first lead, courtesy of Kelly Jolly, a 5'10 junior. Second one off the mark, and Mills has another rebound. Natasha's already got more rebounds than she had last night. She had six points and two boards. She's got three already, and we've only played three minutes. This is the one four where they just clear everything out for Dominique Canty, and that's where she's able to score a lot of points. She gets so deep down onto the baseline. She didn't get in the lane that time, but it's all, still, she's only shooting about a four or five footer. She only had three points at halftime last night in the victory. 74 to 61 over Florida, and then she just took over in the second half with 21. Finished with 24 on the night. And she uses the glass so well. Mills another rebound. Gonna try it on the offensive end. Nope, she walked. Looks like a pretty good move to me. <laughs> nice pump fake to get the defense up in the air. Second Alabama turnover gives it back to Tennessee. Lady Vols trailing by one. They don't trail often. They have a few times, but every time they just come out and destroy the other opponent. Holds clock. Nice drive. Didn't get it off the glass. Stevens has a second chance. 5-4 Tennessee. Tempo cer certainly has not bothered Tennessee. It's a tempo that Alabama wants to slow things down. That's what killed Vanderbilt last night. They couldn't handle Tennessee's tempo. His Mills outside jumper. Holstwa all alone for the rebound. And what happened in that Vanderbilt game, Brad, was the fact that Tennessee was able to come out right away and put the pressure defense on their press at 1-3-1 trap. They haven't had to do it as of yet against Alabama, and Vanderbilt looked shell-shocked. Foul's going to be on Goss as Randall was penetrating. And Samika goes to the free throw line. Another one of those sensational freshmen. Oh! 
Hawkins will check in. Randall and Postma and Ketchings have all shot over 160 free throws. And they are players that they're penetrators also. They can take the outside shot, but it shows you they get to the basket. Randall's first point of the game gives Tennessee a two-point advantage at 6-4 here early. Dominique Candy in Alabama hanging in tough in the early going. How race car driver Bill Elliott eats a Reese's peanut butter cup. Awesome. Clear. There's no wrong way to eat a Reese's. Who says you can't buy taste? My clients do it all the time. Like, let's say I find the most amazing English high-back armchair. And I better get it in front of them immediately or someone else will. That's why I value GTE Internet. In seconds, I can be online in Tampa while downloading huge files from an auction in Paris. I love shopping in Paris. Especially when it's with someone else's money. Get a cup of coffee. Lee Riveted, the new look of Lee. Tuesday, it's championship week on ESPN2 as the best of the Big East battle for a ticket to the big dance. The Big East Championship Game, Tuesday at 7.30 on ESPN2. Tennessee by two, 15.36 to go first half of this SEC Tournament Championship. And these two teams had to go through a couple of opponents to get here. Tennessee over Mississippi State. And then they throttled Van Vanderbilt. And uh, Alabama, a winner over Florida last night. And they beat South Carolina by 20. So that's the approach to get to this title round. And that Florida game was a pretty close game until the beginning of that second half. Alabama came out with some intensity in their defense. Danny's going to take the three. Catchings with a rebound on the outlet to Jolly. Tennessee looking to run. Randall baseline move. Pretty strong. Big base line move. Mills came out of nowhere trying to block it. Eight four Tennessee. Y'all got a nice penetration that time, and Brittany drops it in her first field goal. She's got four. I like that little lean that Brittany Ezel has, and again, she's looking for the foul. Good control. Catching, packs it down, holds ball on the baseline. Didn't get the roll. Goss, nice timing on her jump for the rebound. Mia Goss probably does not get a lot of credit. She's averaging just under eight points, but does a lot of things for this team, that, the intangibles that you don't really see. She had a huge three last night with about five minutes to go and then hit another basket late in that game. Ended up having 14 points and four rebounds. Candy off the mark, rebound, Randall on the run. Jolly's going to pull up. Short. He's out with the board. The ball has really been kept out of Tamika Ketching's hands in the first game against Mississippi State. She had 18 points and 10 rebounds last in the first half. Last night against Vanderbilt in the first half, she had 20 points and 10 rebounds. She has, and she hasn't touched the ball. All right. Neither team shooting well so far in that 30% area. He's out for three. That changes things. This Alabama team in the SEC tournament the other night against South Carolina set a record for threes with 13 in the game. 13 for 22. They went against South Carolina. And Ezel's 66th three-pointer of the year has given Alabama the lead back by one. She can fill it out there if you give her room. Well, you can see the defense is really off. Kelly Jolly's nowhere to be seen. And Ezel has great range. She's not afraid to take a shot. It makes it difficult to defend because we've seen how she penetrates to the basket and then when you pull back to stop that penetration she knocks it down that one was way out there she took that baby from victory drive four lead changes already in alabama by one <laughs> 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 
Mills on the drive. Good drive, but she didn't finish it. Duncan keeps it alive, and she scores inside. And the thing that's frustrating Pat Summit right now is the fact that her team is not rebounding. That hasn't been a problem with them. They had a 26 rebound advantage over Vandy last night. Here's a foul inside. Mills a little over aggressive defensively. Here you see Duncan getting her hands on the ball. Tennessee trying. Tamika Ketsey was on the ground. Randall could not get to it. And just good tenacity in going after the basketball by Alabama. Oklahoma has three. Substitution. Jeter's going to come in for Tennessee, and Stevens will get a break. Talk about the inside play of this Tennessee team with Lashonda Stevens, a sophomore, and then Teresa Jeter, a freshman. Maybe not as strong as if they've had in the past with post players that are big players, but they open up the middle for the other players for Tennessee. Pretty strong when two of your freshmen start and they're all-star type performers and the first person off the bench is a freshman too. Bodes well for next year, not to mention the recruiting Pat Summit's done again. Block shot by Jeter. Scramble for the loose ball, picked up by Tennessee. Well, that got Tennessee going because Jones missed an easy shot. Great no look by Clement into holes ball. What a pass. Tennessee back in front. Ace Clement has had some good playing time in this SEC tournament. She's averaging almost 27 minutes a game in the two games that she's played, and she's really picked up her production. Pat Summit trying to get her in shape because she was out with those stress fractures in her legs. She had a couple of those no-look passes in last night's game. 11 assists in two games. Here she is on Ezell. Four on the shot clock. Brittany may have to throw it up herself and does. Catchings clears it off. Here's Holesquaw on the break by herself. Brad, that's what Rick Moody talked about as far as Ezell's going down to penetrate to the basket. Somebody's got to get back on defense and they throw the ball away. Catchings pulls up after the steal. Goss the rebound. And now Alabama would like to slow it and calm it a little bit. They were up a point a moment ago. Now they're down three. If Alabama can continue this pace, obviously it's going to be to Rick Moody's advantage, but it also kind of takes the crowd out of it a little bit because it's going to be spurts of excitement. Holesclaw and Jones get tangled up down low. And the foul is on Holesclaw, her first. With 11 minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the first half, the action picking up. And Tennessee is put on the pressure. Host Claus giving them a three-point advantage. Hey. Matt, got your email. Vancouver? Genius. Passed it on to Epps. He's running it through the Northwest. Hey, Matt. Ideas are hit in the Northwest. I've got purchasing checking suppliers. Uh-uh. You want it up top. Client briefing. Your Vancouver idea. Want to take your business to the next level? Some nights, it's the person you least expected. A 15-foot jumper or a three-point play. The one who makes the steal, draws the charge, or converts the one and one. Some nights, it's the person you least expected. Some nights, it's you. At a time like this, there are several things you might find useful. Some more useful than others. To build, test, and manage business software, four out of five of the world's largest corporations rely on CompuWare. What do you need most? SEC Coach of the Year, Pat Summit, National Coach of the Year many times, five national championships. Do you think she has calmed down any? We talked to her about that very fact. People talk about this being the greatest team in women's basketball, and I'm not ready to concede that, but I, they are the quickest, and they do play the best tempo of anyone in America right now. Uh, therefore, they bring an excitement 
And to be able to let them do that, to me, that's a no-brainer. Yeah, she's really calmed down. <laughs> well, they, well, they haven't gotten the tempo down. She's basically saying, I've seen enough And uh, as far as the officiating. And also, maybe as far as her team, they're the ones that have got to get things going. And right now, give credit to Alabama as far as controlling the tempo of this game. They're going to the offensive boards, and Tennessee needs to pick up the defensive pressure. Alabama won a 7-0 run to go up by three, and Tennessee's scored six straight since then to take the three-point advantage they have now, 14-11. Randall got a pick. She's going to take it from there. Battle for the rebound comes loose to Jeter. Teresa Jeter said, oh, thank you very much. Nobody wanted this one. Boy, that was a gift. <laughs> and it's Tennessee stretching it out to a five-point advantage. Now Candy will bring it up. That'll move Ezell to the wing. That's basically the one court. You saw the penetration. Just a weave right there. Goss got a good look. A little too strong off the glass. They missed some easy shots. Well, man, all the way down with the left hand. And the loose ball rebounds right now are going Tennessee's way. Cedar's wide open. And it blocked by Mills, though. Catch and knocking that ball out of bounds. I thought so, too. Apparently, it went off Alabama last. I thought catching said. Yeah, watch the block shot. And interesting, Tasha Mills just has great range and good quickness as far as jumping up in the air. But Tennessee, an interesting lineup. Kelly Jolly and Shaniqua Holesclaw out of the lineup. A lot of youngsters, Brene Braxton, Blackston in there as far as the leader. Catching has got the roll. Rookie of the year in the SEC with her first basket. And the lead is extended to seven. This is a dangerous spot right now for Alabama. They need to get some offense together. Tennessee trying to trap Alabama. Good, doing a good job passing the ball. Candy threw up an air ball. Randall trying to run with Clement with it. Whoa. A little hop. A little hop. Skip and a miss. Well, we've seen in the last two games, Randall make some spectacular steals and just driving to the basket behind the back and just spins and so forth. That time she doesn't finish it. In the quarterfinal game, she had a sensational move behind the back with a pass, and somebody asked to back some of that after the game, whether that was too flashy. She said, as long as they complete those passes, they're not flashy. If they end up over in my lap, they're going to sit. <laughs> Rebound off the miss. Ten straight points for Tennessee. They lead by seven. Jeter inside. Mills may have intimidated her a bit. Rizal comes out of the pack with it. Again, Alabama just slowing it down. Tasha Mills really being a force inside for Alabama. Tied without a point for over four minutes. You can't hit dry spells that long against this team. He's out at a block by Jeter out of bounds. 13 on the shot clock. Jeter, the number one shot blocker in the SEC. That's her 69th of the year. And if you're wondering who number two is, you saw Tasha Mills a couple of minutes ago block one on the other end. And number one at Tennessee is Sheila Frost with 78 block shots. So she's not too far behind. Yep. I'd have that single season record. Well, Candy got great position inside. It looked as though catching just plain lost her. Four for Dominique. And finally, that dry spell is over for Alabama. Foul on Jones. And Rick Moody's starting to get animated now a little bit too. Ketchings is such a different player than Shamika Holsclaw. She's so strong on the outside. There's a little elbow right there too to the defensive player. But Tamika Ketchings, what makes her tough, she's been playing the post position. But Pat Summit can take her to the outside because she's got great three-point range. She can put the ball on the floor and also go inside. There's a three-point shot, and you're right. It almost dropped down and kept alive. Holsclaw on the baseline. And now Candy with a weak side rebound. Under eight and a half minutes, first half SEC Tournament Championship here in Columbus, Georgia at the Civic Center. Brad Nessler and Ann Myers with you, and it's Tennessee by five right now. They've led by as many as seven. Tennessee defending Canty by committee right now. Catching's on her. Canty got her own miss. Had it blocked by Jeter. That's two block shots in the last minute or so.
there's a penetration. Canny going right back up, but Jeter's there. She's got five blocks in a game so far this year. That's her high. Did that against Georgia and Louisiana Tech, so she's well on her way, maybe, today to matching that. Catchings gets a break. Canny, the inbound out to Mills. We approach eight minutes. This is the third time these two teams have met for the championship in this SEC tournament. Mills got a nice catch down low. Good feed by Zell and Mills with her first basket. And all of a sudden, Alabama back to within three. Mills has been around defensively, and Alabama's got to do a better job getting her the ball and getting some spacing with good passes like that. Randall packs it inside to Jeter. Kicks right back to Randall. Trying to create something and foul as she shot it. And that's going to be on Mills, and that'll be two. She's got to be very, very careful. As Andy said, she fouled out last night. And she can be very effective for Rick Moody when she's on the floor. She did a great job in the first five minutes or so on the glass, but she won't do Alabama any good if she's sitting over there next to the coaching staff. And I think that's where she's headed right now. I thought Tennessee got really lucky on that play, too, because that's a great play inside outside. But Randall's on the outside. She's passing the ball inside to Jeter. And then all of a sudden, Randall took away the spacing by dribbling right into her. And then Mills had to come out and help. And she unfortunately got called for that foul. But Randall, if she stays back, that inside game will be open a little bit more for Tennessee. Randall's only hit one of her free throws. But underneath, Jolly cleans up. Somehow snuck in there, got the rebound, and makes it 20 of 15, Tennessee. Here's that pressure defense. Tennessee looking to trap. Alabama just doing a good job getting rid of the ball quickly. Candy wanted it a little sooner. Still got a great look in the paint and missed in close. Picks up the loose ball, though. He's L, three. Holtzclaw, the rebound behind the back. The spin move. Everybody on Tennessee's team, and it appears, can handle the ball pretty well. Holtzclaw on the fadeaway. She's got eight. That's one thing that Pat Summers said that Shemekwa Holtzclaw worked on. One of the things she worked on this summer was handling the basketball. Here's a trap. Goss will bring it up now. She's shaded by two defenders. Ezell, there's Candy breaking in on the wing, and it blocked by Jeter. That's three. That defense forces you as an, off as an offensive team to attack, and you want to. You see these openings, but Alabama is not converting because the defense is so quick getting back. Dominique Candy, only two for 12 from the floor. And the foul's going to be, I believe, on Laxton. And she set an illegal pick. That's her first foul with six minutes and seven seconds remaining in the first half. Tennessee in front by seven, 22-15. New from Maven Videos, shooting for success. From DePaul women's basketball head coach, Doug Bruno. Learn the steps to mastering a rock-solid shot, the basics of the triple threat, and the strategies to help you increase your offensive output. This video is not available in any stores. To order, call 1-888-44-MAVEN. That's 1-888-44-MAVEN. Play the game without any doubts. Hi, Bob Vila here with an exciting new hand tool from Sears. The Craftsman Pocket Socket Adjustable Box End Wrench. With a one-hand adjustment, you can lock onto nuts and bolts of almost any size, from 5 16 to 3 quarters of an inch, or 8 to 18 millimeters. The closed box end clamps tight. Heat-treated steel construction makes it durable. And because it's a Craftsman hand tool, made in America, it's guaranteed forever. To order your Craftsman Pocket Socket, call 1-800-762-9999 now. Sunday after the game, only on ESPN2. 
Alabama had cut Tennessee's lead to three, but then some excellent defense and a couple of baskets on the other end, and they're up by seven. Here's one of those block shots, Ann. Teresa Jeter at 6-3 is a shot-blocking force for the Tennessee Lady Vols. She averaged over 11 blocks in high school. And again, Alabama, they look like they've got things wide open, but it shows you the quickness even of the freshman Teresa Jeter, who probably does not get a lot of credit. She's got all the block shots for Tennessee. Mills has the two for Alabama. I shouldn't say credit, as much recognition, I should say. That's good way to put it. Here's Duncan. Off balance, and it's still in here. She was a nice spark last night, I thought, for Alabama. She's got four off the bench here late this afternoon. Cam Duncan, a senior, not only can take to the basket, can two, shoot the outside shot. This is a senior lace Alabama team a lot of experience. They lost two big players last year, though, in Shalonda Ennis, who was a Kodak All-American, and Yolanda Watkins. Three-pointer. Short. I, I thought Rich Moody got higher up in the air than <laughs> Brittany Zell trying to block that shot. He started the day <laughs> slow, but you're right. He's warming up over there. <laughs> Here's a pass over here. He's like going, look at the jump! Come on, he's there, get your hands up! Uh, Rick yeah. Moody in his ninth year. In 94, they went to the Final Four. And mentioned twice Alabama has been in the SEC Tournament Final Game. In 84 and in 96. Jolly missed the second. In 84, it was the last year that Alabama beat Tennessee. They both were in the final four. Tennessee ended up being second that year. Emily Candy looks at her head coach before she brings it into the front court with 5-10 left first half. She's going to try to do it on her own. Got it off the glass. Dominique Canty really creates good angle off the backboard. When she drives to the basket, she puts herself where she can use the glass. Catching's inside, you talk about glass usage. That was nifty. Dipped under and around and got six. The lead is six, I should say. Catching's with four points. Duncan, oh, nice, nice dish inside. Oh, oh, oh. Tough call. Oh. Cam Duncan going to get called for the charge. Just makes a nice dish. And Shemiko Holesclaw kind of clapping hands with Mickey DeMoss, one of the assistants over there. I don't know about that one. Tough play for Latrice Jones finishing the shot. Holesclaw standing straight up. Ooh, just, I mean, she's standing straight up. Doesn't even have her knees bent, turned sideways. I hit you harder than that so. out on the open, out on the court. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Holesclaw goes to the free throw line. She has 10 points already. It's amazing catching, she has four points, but she had double doubles by halftime in both the games to get to this title round. Here's Kelly Jolly. Nice hustle. And a 20 second timeout. Good job by Izell. She helped lead the charge defensively there and got it over to Goss and then got the timeout call. Championship week continues on the news featuring the women's championship game of the Big East Conference. Coming up on Tuesday night at 7.30 Eastern time. Does anyone really doubt that UConn will be there? Well, that looks like the case, but the championship will be decided on Tuesday night. Notre Dame beat Villanova today and UConn over West Virginia. Coming up tonight, Boston College meets Rutgers and Georgetown against Miami. The women's title game on the news Tuesday night, 7.30. 4.33 left of the first half of this SEC championship game. Neither team exactly lighting it up. Alabama shooting only 28%. Tennessee only 38 Alabama has done a nice job all year holding the opposition to a poor field goal percentage. And they'd like that to continue, but they're going to have to warm up themselves offensively. Well, Tennessee leads the nation in scoring with almost 90 points a game. Goss too strong off the backboard. Duncan and Randall fight for the rebound. Possession arrow goes to Tennessee. They had 61 points in the first half yesterday yep. against Vanderbilt. 
And what were you calling? What was your uh, bet? I was just starting to guess, like, <laughs> 120 to 60. About five minutes into that game, I said to Will Belkey, our producer, hey, I'd say about 120. They got the 106. Uh, they had their high 125 against DePaul. Four times they've been over the century mark. Cole's claw. Great spin, 15-footer, and dropped it. You know, it's almost slow motion. She just is such in control of where she's going. Eight-point lead now. Biggest of the afternoon for Tennessee, and Goss can't again get the roll. And on the battle for the rebound, a foul call. Leah Goss really struggling. She's had some nice shots, as you said, Brad, wide open, and they're not falling for her. Cottle picks up her first foul. 27 to 19. Toya Cottle, one of Rick Moody's JUCO transfers. She's an All-American at North West Shoals Community College. Rick looks up at the scoreboard and sees that his team is down eight right now. It's Amika Ketchings at the free, uh, free throw line. And Tennessee, but cold at the strike here in the first half. Five for 12 is all. That's helping keep Alabama in this game. Well, they trail by eight. We're down to three and a half to go first half. And the Lady Vols are a team that shoot over 70% from the free throw line. Yeah, that's very unlike them so far. Candy. Off the back of the rim. Rebound. Duncan tried to tip it in. And finally, it's pulled down by Ketchings on the run. Going to go all the way coast to coast. Throws it up there to blocking foul. I think, I think Rick Moody hurt his back on that one. Yep. I saw him go down on the floor. And you saw it in half court. Tamika Ketchings was coming all the way. She does a great job going off of the boards, but she makes her mind up as soon as she gets to the top of the key on the other end. And there is the body right there, body contact, almost, you know, either way. It's almost a no call, but Ketchings is going to end up going to the free throw line. Rick Moody very upset at the call. But Ketchings made up her mind. She was going all the way. Yep, she made her mind up at about half court, as you said. I don't think her dad could have caught her at that point. <laughs> now you talked to Harvey before the game today. He was here, as a matter of fact, Tamika Ketchings has scored doubles, double doubles, every time family members have watched her on in person. Our men, as I mentioned, 18 and 10 and 20 and 10 in the first two games to get to this one. She's got six now with those two free throws. And the lead is swelled for Tennessee. Double digit advantage, courtesy of Holt's Claw and Ketchings, number one team by 10. You know the saying, look before you leap? Well, it's especially true when you make financial decisions. Maybe you should be talking to Conseco. Phone Patrol from 1-800-COLLECT. Attention citizens, I've got big news. 1-800-COLLECT is now 10 cents a minute every evening. Whoa, 10 cents a minute, that's cheap. Yep, 1-800-COLLECT, you'll save so much you can buy a new hairstyle, Sonny. I never thought collect calling could be so inexpensive. <laughs> Isn't saving money fun? 1-800-COLLECT, 10 cents a minute every evening, all week long. You know the workers who carry down their backs the promise of a better world? Who selflessly risk their lives for their jobs? Who took pride in knowing their sweat and muscle helped build this country we call America? Well, we went back and took their pants. Reintroducing the original Lee Carpenter pant. Lee riveted dungarees, the new look of Lee. Sometimes, when you think you're on the right path, it turns out to be just the opposite one. Financial decisions can be like that. Maybe you should be talking to Conseco. It would be hard to argue with the sign on the left, and indeed, they have won back-to-back -back championships. They're up by 10 here with 3-10 left. Your prowess at picking the winners in this year's Women's NCAA Tournament could win you a trip to next year's Final Four. Just log on to ESPN.com after the brackets are announced Sunday. And before the first game on Thursday, March 12th, you could be a winner and be on your way to next year's Men's Final Four. It is 29 to 19 with 3.05 left Tennessee. Seven straight points in the last couple of minutes. And Alabama 
does not want to go to the locker room down in double digits. So let's see if they can get something going offensively. Coming out of that timeout, Tennessee going into that zone, mixing up their defense against Alabama. And a traveling call on Leah Goss. Another reason a lot of people said that the reason that Alabama was so close for Tennessee, this is Tennessee's reason, is that they lost Kyra Elsey in that game. She's a defensive stopper, a very good rebounder, and she went out seven minutes into that Alabama game and just really kind of shook them emotionally. But give credit to Alabama just really staying with them and, and controlling the tempo of the game. But Samika Randall has stepped up into that starting position. I, I think this Tennessee team, Brad, would be a better team with Kyra Elsey if she's healthy because Randall coming off the bench is an unbelievable bomb. To think that they could be better than they are scares you a little bit. Foul was on Jolly. And Alabama again, an opportunity. Got into that 10-point lead. There's a good look for Dominique Candy. She nails it. What Eight a, for Dominique. What a nice pass by Leah Goss. Just really making the defense commit to her and opening up the high post. Well, that the left-hander feeds catchings. Gonna drive and dish. Jolly on the baseline. That's a gutsy shot against Mills and company. And Ezell comes up. Smallest player on the court gets the rebound. Inside. Under two minutes in the half. Candy got the handoff and a pick all together and works it all the way around. Got it in a chance for a three-point play. Well, she just decided to drive all the way around the block, didn't she? <laughs> she sure did. She just making the turn right here, and Ace Clement just can't stay with her. And there's the contact. Dominique Canty creating it. Defense isn't in position. You're going to get called for the foul. So Dominique already in double figures and a chance to add to it. Averaging over 21 a game at 24 last night. Nails the free throw. 22 games, she's already had over 20 points. Well, now the Alabama faithful have something to cheer about. Down double digits a moment ago, they cut it to five in a hurry. It's hard to battle Tennessee, their talent, and their fans because they have followed them, obviously, from Knoxville. And there are quite a few RVs out in the parking lot that have been here all week. And they've all got orange flags flying. Four on the game clock, 25 on the shot clock, Jeter on the drive. <laughs> he's out all alone. Now that you talk about a free rebound. Well, Tasha Mills did a good job. She stayed right back, didn't go after the ball. Jeter coming down the middle and made her get out of position. Mills and Jeter kind of going at it inside. Alabama gets a bucket here. They're only going to be down three or less. That three-pointer won't go, though. Catchings. Grabs it off the backside. Ahead to Randall on the run. Nice spin, a bump, and an offensive foul. She was out of control. The spin was nice, but the defense by Leah Goss was better. 52 seconds remaining here in the half. Don't forget the Lee Jean's halftime report is less than a minute away. Take a look at the ACC Championship, Old Dominion in action. That is coming up in 40 seconds. Steal by Randall. Four on one. And a nice job by Goss to get back to knock that away. Rich Moody's telling his players, think out there. You can't throw cross court against this quick team. And Sabika Randall, not only quick, but she always has her knees bent, so she gets up in the air. Catching the triple. Off the glass somehow from that angle. I don't even know how she got the glass from there. <laughs> Tennessee's got almost three minutes without points, and now Alabama, the final possession, barring a steal or a turnover. And another chance to cut into this lead a little bit further. I think they would take being down by three at halftime, that's for sure. Tennessee's only trailed at halftime three times this year in 32 games. Duncan, and she hit the side of the glass. Jones! Cleans up on the rebound. Her first basket couldn't have come at a better time. 
Nice comeback by Alabama. They're down by 10 points. They scored the final seven points of the first half, and they have definitely made this a game. Much more than that, in fact. Don't forget, ESPN News coming up at halftime. Tennessee leads Alabama at the break by three. ESPN 2's presentation of Championship Week is brought to you by America Online. So easy to use, no wonder it's number one. get any worse. <laughs> then you go to practice the next day. What's wrong with you girls today? Life isn't just measured in days or years. It's measured in doorways and walkways or a favorite sweater, long outgrown. At State Farm, we give our policyholders a yardstick of their own. It's called the Family Insurance Checkup. It helps them measure their own needs and pick the coverage that's right for them. So call your agent for a checkup. Because insurance, like other things in life, is something you never want to outgrow. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. How Domino Champ Charlie Armstrong eats a Reese's peanut butter cup. There's no wrong way to eat a Reese's. Why is America on America Online? Email. We can shop. Instant messages. I can check my stocks all day long. And we've spent over $500 million to more than triple capacity. It's so easy my dad can use it. America Online. So easy to use, no wonder it's number one. This halftime report is presented by Lee Jeans. Now, let's join the ESPN News Network. From the worldwide leader in sports, this is the ESPN News Network. Hello, everybody, and welcome to those of you watching the Women's SEC Championship on ESPN2. This is the ESPN News Network. I'm Chuck Garfine here to get you up to date on all the other hoop action going on today. And there is plenty. And we start with the Colonial Championship, Old Dominion versus American. We have the highlights. The Monarchs coming out firing. Their first shot of the game is good by Tisha Penachero. And then... It is Mary Andrade for the hoop and the foul right about now. ODU led 22 to 2. Second half, the shot of the day. And Achero goes down low and one. She added 22 points and seven steals. And the Lady Monarchs all over American 82 to 49. The Lady Monarchs have won their three tournament games by 18, 27, and now 30. Two points. Clemson and North Carolina playing for the ACC championship. Chanel Wright didn't score a point in the Tar Heels semifinal Saturday. Sunday gets the points right there. And the Heels beating Clemson in transition. Teasley, bullet pass to Tracy Reed for the layup. Carolina up 12 at the half. Jim Davis did not enjoy this one. Carolina head coach Sylvia Hatchell. Pulls her starters with 88 seconds left in the game and a 31-point lead, and that is how it ends. North Carolina wins by 31. These two teams have won the last five conference tournament titles. NC won four of them. The Heels beat three ranked teams in three days. More women's hoops. UConn and West Virginia in the Big East quarters. Kristen Annie, Kristen Annie cubed. Cuts the lead to seven, and then Annie from the other side. 
Now this Rebecca Burbridge misses the three, three but there's Can't Annie right there to Annie clean it up. The Cuts the lead to game. six, and, and then Annie Banks, the three, the three the in. Here we go again. Wasn't finished. Misses the three, three dishes now to Mandy Rone. Cuts the lead to two. Rita Williams misses both free throws three go. seconds ago. Gina Oriema thinks he has a win, Can't but go, West so. Virginia, one last chance. Not it's sure short. It and UConn hangs on without Nikisha Sales, 84 to 82. Elsewhere, Notre Dame over Villanova. So these two would presumably meet. UConn, 13 straight Big East tournament wins. Rita Williams, 27 for UConn. Well, the Big 12 is more like the Big Two. Kansas and Oklahoma State definitely headed for the big dance. Oklahoma and Nebraska currently chewing on Hubba Bubba, while Missouri and Kansas State probably headed for the NIT. Today, the top two teams in the conference wrapped up the regular season. And don't be surprised if they meet again next week for the Big 12 championship. And I'm talking about Kansas and Oklahoma State. Paul Pierce, the drive and the feed to T.J. Pugh. Second half, Cowboys coming back. That's Brett Robish. Look at that again. Off his, well, face. And goes in. Oklahoma State trailing by four. Cowboys down four here when Chad Alexander hits the three. But Kansas, in transition, comes right back. Billy Thomas, Nick Bradford, slam. Kansas wins it by four. Rafe LaFrance playing with a bad shoulder, finishing with 17 points and 14 rebounds. Cowboys head coach Eddie Sutton pretty much summing things up by saying, quote, you can't beat a quality team like Kansas when you shoot 37%. Michigan State looking to wrap up the Big Ten title, hosting Purdue. Oh, oh indeed. Morius Peterson, the huge jam, stayed up four. But Brad Miller, part of a big comeback by Purdue. Boilermakers by two. Spartans looking to tie it. Six seconds to go. Jason Klein, the air ball. Andre Hudson to Morris Peterson. We're going into overtime, tied at 92. And in OT, Purdue up by one. State with the ball. Ten seconds to go. Mateen Cleese could have been a foul. No call. Gene Cady, a little excited. So Purdue up three after two free throws. Eight tenths of a second left. Cleves almost scores. The Spartans lose a close one at home, 99-96. to 96. Only the Spartans' second loss in the last 13 games. And for Purdue, it avenges a 17-point loss to the Spartans at home earlier this season. Much more to come on the news. Those of you on the deuce, we're back with more, so stay right there. I always knew it was a woman's prerogative to change her mind. Fortunately, she was dressed for the occasion. Lee riveted flares, the new look of Lee. Hey. Matt, got your email. Vancouver, genius. Pass it on to Epps. He's running it through the Northwest. Hey, Matt, ideas are hitting the Northwest. I've got purchasing checking suppliers. Uh-uh. You want it up top. Client briefing. Your Vancouver idea. Want to take your business to the next level? It is grounded in the belief that for ideas to take flight, they must have wings. The all-new Chrysler Concord LXI, combining remarkable agility with a 225 horsepower engine so advanced it provides more power yet uses less fuel. Chrysler Concorde, built on the belief that great cars appeal to a more passionate side. Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. Out of the blue, Upjohn invites me to help him test the new road game. Okay, I hated this spot. I said yes. This new Rogaine Extra Strength for Men is more concentrated. It gets more to the root to grow more hair. Two months in, it's working. My wife's saying something's happening. But maybe I'm just lucky. What about the other guys? Listen to this. 45% more hair than with original Rogaine. 45% more hair with the new Rogaine. 
It's the uh, ultimate spot remover. Three more teams today will get NCAA tournament bids. Two have already gotten them. Here's one. Davidson over Appalachian State, 66 to 62 in the Southern Conference Championship. Davidson using its depth and defense and getting its first conference championship in 12 years. Murray State and Tennessee State. So yes, Murray State headed to the field of 64, shooting 60% from the field. TSU shot 35%. Jimmy Roberts had 27 points, Isaac Spencer 20 points and 11 rebounds. Send you back to the game between the Crimson Tide and Lady Volunteers on the deuce. And Crimson Tide playing the Lady Vols tough. Those of you on ESPN News, we're back in a moment. Got enough vice in your life? Well, maybe it's time to put some back. Everybody freeze! You can feel the heat again with Miami Vice on home video. Call this toll-free number now for Miami Vice, the collector's edition, and recapture all the pulse-pounding action and music you remember. Step back into life in the fast lane with two hip undercover Miami cops. Sonny Crockett. Well, no guns, no glory. Ricardo Tug. Get out of my face! Use your credit card and call this toll-free number now and get the premiere movie, two uncut hours for just $4.95 with subscription. And in case we haven't shown you enough, Miami Vice, get it now on home video and put some vice back in your life. No! To get your first two-hour video of Miami Vice, the collector's edition, for only $4.95 plus $3.79 shipping, call toll-free 1-800-411-9952. RE-TV, America's keeper of classic TV. From the family of minivans that have won more total awards than any other, with an available fourth sliding door, standard air conditioning, roomy seven passenger seating, and easy out roller seats. With all this, you may think it's one of the most expensive minivans you can buy, but it's not. It's the lowest priced minivan you can buy. Plymouth Voyager. Now get $1,000 cash back on Grand Voyager, only at your Chrysler and Plymouth dealer. This halftime report is presented by Lee Jeans, the new look of Lee. Top-ranked team in the country leading at halftime, but by only three points here in Columbus, Georgia. The Lady Vols had a 29-19 lead, and then the Crimson Tide of Alabama put together seven straight points at the end of the half, including this off a miss. It was Jones on the rebound, the stick back off the glass to make it the 29-26 game we have in the piercing blue eyes of the SEC Coach of the Year. She can only smile. You can bet those eyes will be on her team at halftime to try to get them a little more involved in our second 20-minute stanza. At intermission, Lady Balls by three. You know the workers who carry down their backs the promise of a better world, who selflessly risk their lives for their jobs, who took pride in knowing their sweat and muscle helped build this country we call America? Well, we went back and took their pants. Reintroducing the original Lee Carpenter pant. Lee riveted dungarees. The new look of Lee. Phone patrol from 1-800-COLLECT. Attention citizens! I've got big news! 1-800-COLLECT is now 10 cents a minute every evening! Whoa! 10 cents a minute? That's cheap! Yep, 1-800-COLLECT, you'll save so much you can buy a new hairstyle, Sonny. <laughs> I never thought collect calling could be so inexpensive. <laughs> Isn't saving money fun? 1-800-COLLECT, 10 cents a minute every evening, all week long.
For the practical side, the new Chrysler Cirrus LXI is just $18,995. Loaded. Chrysler. Engineered to be great cars. ESPN2's presentation of Championship Week is brought to you by Conseco, where our goal is to help you protect wealth, create wealth for life. And by Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. Top rank Tennessee by three at halftime here in Columbus, Georgia, as Championship Week continues on ESPN. We welcome you back, everybody. Brad Nessler and Ann Myers. Andy, I think Rick Moody's got to be pretty happy. He was down 10. It was a danger zone for him in the final couple of minutes. His team put it together, only down three. No question about it. I mean, they've got to be very happy in the sense that they have controlled the tempo of the game and have taken more shots than Tennessee. They've had the ball more times. They're rebounding. They've been staying right with them, and they've been playing very good team ball. Brittany Ezell with seven points and four rebounds. Only two assists, but that is a big assist right there into Tasha Mills, who needs to get involved with the scoring more. Only her two first two points and only two points in the first half. Dominique Canty has carried the load going to the basket and also has hit some outside shots. On the other hand, for Tennessee, it's been all Shamiqua Holstaw. Nobody else has really gotten into the flow as far as the offense. So I look for Tennessee in the second half, Brad, to really to show some intensity in their defense to try and create some turnovers to quicken up the pace. These are Nike first half stats. Neither team shooting very well. Tennessee by only shooting 50% from the free throw line left the door open a little bit. Rebounding dead even virtually and the turnover story likewise. But that 7-0 run at the end of the half really helped Alabama's cause. And the second half is underway from the Civic Center. And we'll see if Alabama can pull a stunner. Nobody's been able to beat Tennessee yet this year. They came in 32 and 0. Here comes the defensive intensity that Ann was predicting by Tennessee already. And an offensive foul. It's on Mills. It's three. And it is. Oh, boy. Tough call for Alabama. Rick Moody just is in shock. I mean, I don't know what else to say, but Tasha Mills has three fouls. She's got to play the rest of this game, see how much time she's going to stay on the bench because she is a player that has done a good job defensively for them. Outside jumper off the mark. Candy rebounds. Ezell with an opportunity for Alabama here to cut it down to one or tie it if that goes. Short. Randall the rebound. Randall did not have a particularly impressive first half. Lee Goss has missed some three-pointers, some wide-open shots for this Alabama team. She shoots almost 40% from three-point range. Jolly got open from the free-throw line. Holds claw, keeps it alive, strong up and one. 14 for Holzclaw and a chance to add to it. Bottle with the foul, that's her second. For Holzclaw, the SEC player of the year, two-time SEC first team, two-time Kodak All-American, has a good chance to repeat. I think there's a bunch of SEC players to be Kodak All-American. That's true. Here's Candy, there's another one. 13 for Dominique. Stevens trying to draw a foul. Candy, as we mentioned, is so good at creating that contact. Very well under control. And to see a little bit better ball movement. Pretty stagnant in that first half. Alabama in a zone right now. 10 on the shot clock as they pack it into catching. She kicks back out to Jolly. Wide open for three. And a rebound off. Aliyah Goss, who had five boards in the first half. She may have missed that shot, but a good execution by Tennessee. Inside play, Ketchings does a good job faking and a quick outside pass to Kelly Jolly. And then she had to hustle back and get on defense. Candy almost threw it away. Eight on the shot clock. They're going to call a travel before that. Rick Moody saying she's got a pivot foot. Ezell so adept at that move where she just ducks under the defense. See if she moves that left foot. Yep. Can go either way. She's stepping and going up in the air. Two and a half minutes in, two and a half. Doesn't go very high. Not at all. <laughs> Could barely slide a piece of paper underneath there. 
Here's Catchings trying to feed it inside. Cottle got a hand on it. It comes free. Go right back in to Catchings. She's double teamed. Stripped to the ball by Azell. Nice job defensively by Alabama. Did the ball ever go in the front court? The whole body went in the front court and then went back to the back court. Candy in the drive. And it's down to two. Tennessee trying to go inside to Catchings. Make something happen, get another foul on Mills, and she picks up her four. Boy, you called that one before it even happened. That's exactly what they did, and that's exactly what Tasha Mills did. Picked up her fourth foul. She picked up that third foul maybe about two minutes ago. Do you take her out then? Well, Rick Moody stuck with her and hoped that she could get good position. Mills is the type of player who likes to block shots. She's straight up in the air, but the contact is already created by Ketchings because Mills has already got him in the air. That will take away the defensive force inside for Alabama. She'll come out after this free throw. Unless you can get Caudle and Jones to really step up their game inside, but Tennessee coming out in the second half, they need to go inside a little bit more. They're, they're First half was very stagnant in the half-court game, which is what Alabama wanted to put Tennessee in, is a half-court game. But they were just, everything was like a one-on-one -on -one situation almost, and they were missing some shots. But they've got to try and create an offense with their inside game to kick it back out to the outside game and open things up. Nika Catchings with her first two points of this half. Tennessee by four, and Alabama with a much smaller lineup now in there with Jones and Duncan having come in for Cottle and Mill. And look for the 2 2 one half-court trap. Here's Duncan. He's going to take it all the way underneath and throw it away. That's exactly what the Lady Vols wanted, and Rick Moody not upset, or he is upset, I should say, about a no call. But Alabama has to be under better control when they break that press, and when they press Tennessee presses, they make you rush. Alabama with nine turnovers now, three in the first three minutes of this half. Holes claw. Didn't get the roll. Battle underneath for the rebound. Randall somehow came up with a loose ball and I believe may have come up with a foul as well. She missed underneath and uh, in her effort to try to get the ball back, picks up her second. And Latrice Jones was just standing there with the ball. like, was it on me? Was it on me? Don't call it on me. <laughs> Please no, we don't know, need any more foul trouble on our set. She had a great expression. Here comes that three-quarter court trap. Can't hold it too long. The Duncan in the front court. As it's stripped by Holesclaw. Behind the back dribble, ahead to Randall, if she can find the handle, and she does. They're going to call that on Ketchings, I believe. Ketchings is really banging inside. Coming down, trying to get position. Put a good collision down low. It's a fast break situation. The ball went off of Randall's foot, and they're off to the races. Lots of looks at the officials by the coaches today. <laughs> <up there. laughs> Kodak moments. Holds claw, the steal, the outlet's taken right back the other way. Zell in the right place at the right time. She brings it down, penetrates, rebound Jolly. Didn't have quite the angle to use the backboard. Catchings and Randall with her. It's Randall. Got it. Good pass by Kelly Jolly. And there's a pretty situation. Defensively, you got to be smart to get position and take the charge. Don't just always look to block the shot. Candy two on one with Jones. She goes underneath on her own and drew a foul from Jeter. Good play by Candy to draw the foul, but also maybe a two on one situation where she had a bounce pass to her open teammate to give it to her. Here you see wide open Jeter eating up space right there and seeing Candy taking it from. Chicago, where she learned how to play on the streets with her brother Sam, who go down when she was eight years old. She just loved the game. Go across from her house to Olivet Center and light it up with the boys. And she's lighting it up to the tune of 16 so far in this one. Well, she'd like to get a win today. That's for sure. It'd be a great birthday present for her. Her birthday is tomorrow. She's 21. And, That's right. And Tasha Mills. 
she's, she's five. five today. That's right, she's a leap, leapier baby. I love that. She's leaped all the way over to the bench, though, with four personal fouls. And the ball out to Tennessee. And the ball out to a timeout with 15 16 remaining. Tennessee leads by five. Some decisions are harder than others. The Chrysler Sebring LXI Coupe or the Sebring Limited Convertible. For the passionate side, fully independent suspension, speed-sensitive steering, multi-valve V6, and a luxurious leather-trimmed interior. The practical side, lease the convertible from just $2.99 a month. And on the Coupe, get a 1,000 cash back and luxurious leather at no charge. Some decisions are easier than others. Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. I'm grateful that Michael Garcia is in our lives. State Farm Mike Garcia speaking. We had a house fire, a house burned. That was a tough day. He didn't treat us as a policyholder, he treated us as a neighbor, as a friend. I gave him a check right away. We went from there to putting the pieces back together. He's not a hero in the sense of a, a sports hero or a movie star. He's a quiet hero. He looks out for everyone in the neighborhood. It's gone from being a slogan to really being my way of life. Life is unpredictable. Sometimes you need health insurance. Sometimes you need life insurance. And sometimes... Simone, è per te. You need investments for the future. So at the Consigo Companies, our goal is to help you protect wealth, create wealth for life. Tennessee rolling along, only up by five though actually. Alabama hanging in there with them. 15-16 remaining in the ball game and a 30-0 regular season for Tennessee and add on two more victories here in the SEC tournament. Well, you look at UConn last year, they went into the the regional finals against Tennessee, they were 31-0. And uh, UConn of 95 won the championship, Vermont. You see the two years of 92-93, La Tech, 29-0, and Texas. Is undefeated. Texas 34 0 and 85 86. UConn 35 0 and 94 95. And can this team now, Tennessee, run the table and become another undefeated national champion? And they don't graduate anybody. Isn't that phenomenal? Everybody's back and they've got some kids coming in in the middle that will help inside. What a scary thought that is for the rest of the Southeastern Conference, especially. And a foul offensively on Jeter. And Shemiko Holskaw, even with the pros coming into play, that a lot of people have speculated with Shemiko Holskaw. There you see the banging inside and Jeter trying to get position and Jones trying to keep her out. But whether Shemiko Holskaw will stay in, she wants an education. Pat Summit is told it's all up to Shemiko Holskaw. And she said that she's won four titles at Christ the King in New York. She's won two national championships here in Tennessee and wants two more and a degree. Here's Goss, stripped on the way to the basket and out of bounds, back to Tennessee. Well, that lady's won it all. Rick Moody would like to win it all. Into the final four of the four. Four straight sweet 16 for Alabama. They're down here by five. Jolly, great look underneath. Holds claw, didn't get it. Threw a foul from Candy. Well, it was a nice looking pass, though. Boy, if she makes that, talk about this crowd going wild. But defensively, Alabama doing a good job. They know that the Tennessee players like to spin, and you can see them cheating to come back. But a good cut by Shamiqua Holesclaw. Kelly Jolly never really taking her eyes off of where her teammates are on the floor and spots Holesclaw underneath. 15 today. 2,136, now 2,137 in her career. Didn't take her long to get to 1,000 points either at Tennessee. 46 games is all it took her to get to 1,000 points. She is, quite frankly, she's so good, she makes it look kind of easy. Here comes Candy. She's almost that way for Alabama. So tough to guard. She goes that right side, and Jeter just couldn't pick up on it. Almost six minutes into this half, still a four-point game. Alabama hanging tough with top-ranked Tennessee. Randall trying to post up against Jones. Holesclaw with 
five on the shot clock. He's going to take a long jumper. Rebound, Canty. That's Again, five for Dominique. Excuse me, Alex. You talk about Randall posting up Mississippi State. And Vanderbilt, Randall was having trouble getting the ball, and Pat said, trust me, go down low and then pop up. And Randall is a versatile player to play with their back to the basket or facing it. But here's the player, Dominique Canty, the one four they'll just clear it out for. He already has 18 points. Tennessee in that zone, looking to trap. Doss, way outside. She was due. A one-point game. Talk about perfect timing on your first field goal of the day. Alabama on this defense has done a good job clogging things up, making it tough for Tennessee to get the ball in the middle, and they're going to call a pushing foul on Dominique Canty. Oh, a little touch down low. If Raft was here, he'd call it a nickel dimer. I'm not even sure it was worth that much. You're going to see the shot by Leah Goss, who got married this summer, wide receiver Todd Goss, and she said it's been great, giving her a lot of confidence. And then down underneath, just a little contact and the reach. No. Oh, somebody can't, can't believe it. Tennessee's lead's been cut down to a single point. We're under 13 minutes in the game. Holds claw. Just inside the three point line. 18 for Shemeika Holds claw. So the two stars of their respective teams both have 18. Ezell off the mark with three, and Duncan hammers Jeter trying to get that rebound. Pam Duncan second foul. Pam Duncan came off the bench last year, started three times this year, four times I should say. And she just is a real good spark for this Alabama team coming off the bench. Alabama in the zone. Let's see if Tennessee can it. But Kelly Jolly just sets you up, Brad. She gets everybody else involved and doesn't look to shoot. We talked about Pat Summit coming up to her yesterday before Vanderbilt said, you've got to get more involved in the offense. And that time it opens up for her teammates. Every time Alabama gets it close, Tennessee's got an answer. Five straight for the Lady Ball. What a on the penetration and a foul on Jones inside trying to get the rebound. That's too bad that Dominique Canty misses that shot. And Rick Moody said, we've got to make the big plays. We've got to make our shots fall. Dominique Canty is seeing daylight. She went through four orange jerseys. The ball does not floor. Uh, here you see her just step back, and there she goes. She's going all the way. Four jerseys right there. It does not fall, and then the foul is going to be called on Jones off the rebound. But give credit to Dominique Canty, just seeing it wide open and looking to go to the basket. Bonus time for Tennessee now. So Holdsclaw goes up to the free throw line where she's four out of five today. Number five of six. That's another part of her game that she has improved over the summer as far as her free throw shooting. She was like a 64, 65% free throw shooter. Got to the line a lot last year. Really made an effort to get much better. Up to 77% this year. And she stretched that lead back for Tennessee to eight. In the Charlestown Register tomorrow, they won't say the team missed the winning shot. They won't say the team made the winning shot. Just hope they spell your name right. It is 180 degrees from expected. It is a leather-trimmed interior. And now, it ties as J.D. Power & Associates' most appealing minivan. The new Chrysler Town & Country LXI. Built on the belief that great cars appeal to a more passionate side. And now, it's available with $1,000 cash back or a very special low lease rate. Chrysler. Engineered to be great cars. The only thing more unpredictable in nature is people. And I deal with both. 
You never know. Someone could be calling for a $25 titanium ice screw or a $25,000 expedition to Mount Everest. So I can't afford to miss a call. If I do, well, that means money. That's why I value GTE. Even out here, I know my calls aren't being dropped. Oops! Dropped. It's a bad word. Tennessee 44 to 36 with 11:40 left. The Meeks shall inherit the NCAA. Well, they're trying to inherit the SEC tournament title right now, and certainly they're off to a pretty good start as they have 33 of the 44 points in the first two round games. Between the three of them, they had 123 points in two games. Pretty it, strong. And it shows you that you just cannot key on one player. And if one is having a bad day, then the other one picks it up. And it's not just always on the points. So far, it's whole squad doing most of the offensive damage for Tennessee. And Candy, who just slipped there, has 18 for Alabama. But they trail now by eight. And again, it's hit that danger zone a little bit for the Crimson Tide. They had cut the game down to one. Candy too strong. She got her own rebound. That one's too weak. Dominique trying to find the perfect mixture. Had too much on one, not enough on the other. Try to pack it down low to whole squad, and they turn it over. Alabama still slowing things down. Tennessee trying to trap, switching up man-to-man -man zone. Tide hasn't had a point in almost three and a half minutes. We approach the midway point of the second half. Zell has not looked to score. We've seen. Boy, Goss has hit two huge threes. We mentioned she had a big one in about the final five minutes last night. They definitely needed that one. And they've also missed Mills in the middle. Even though she had two points, she just was a, a factor down low. Goss and Candy are the only two Alabama players that have scored this half. Oh. Tough catch. No pun intended. What an assist of a what boy. She went up with those big paws. Tamika Ketchings went all the way. I talked to her dad Harvey. He said, oh, yeah, she gets above the rim, you know, with her fingers. Her dad played 11 years in the NBA with My the brother. Bucks in the 76ers. That's right. My brother Here's David played with him. Steal. Three on two, Tennessee. Holds claw. Catching second chance. He's going to go to the free throw line. And it's going to be a foul on Duncan. And now she's in a little bit of trouble. That's three on Duncan. And she had come in to take Mills' spot in the lineup. Mills with four fouls. And she is coming off the bench. So you can only save her so long with 9.56 left. Tasha Mills trying to give a presence to Rick Moody's defense inside, is about ready to check back in. This Alabama team has a few more games left in them, whether they win or lose this SEC tournament, because they will go to the NCAA tournament and create a lot of problems for teams. Alabama will be there, Florida will be there, Mandy, maybe Georgia. I mean, you get on the list, there's a lot of teams in the Southeastern Conference that will be Still playing basketball after today's over. The SEC has a good chance of taking six, maybe seven, Tennessee, Florida, Alabama, Bandy, Georgia, maybe LSU, maybe Arkansas. And out of that conference, Dominic Cantu has got to be considered as an all American. I think Tamika Holzclaw. I think Muriel Page has had a wonderful year down in Florida. And Tamika Ketchings. I know she's another freshman, but boy, if she doesn't make it, she has had a terrific year. She's another one that could be another four-time All-American. She doesn't make it this year. She will sometime. Yeah. Get back. <laughs> Ezell, nice dish to Mills. She didn't finish it, though. Ketchings a rebound. And we've seen that time and time again by this Crimson Tide team that and he, Brit, Brittany Ezell is not happy with that miss because they're missing easy shots. That was a great pass down low. Holdsclaw, she got it back somehow. Got it the second time. And Mills still going up to try and block shots. Holdsclaw underneath the basket, just making great effort to put it back up. Genuine smile from Coach Summit. Her team is up 10 again. Jeter, I think, is going to get caught with this one. That will be her third. So the lead that was 10 in the first half at 29 to 19 is now 49 39. 
And just when Tennessee got it up in double digits the first time, Alabama put that 7-0 run together to end the first half and make it a close game at halftime. And they're going to have to have an answer here, too, or it's going to be too late. Only 9-17 left. Well, Canty has scored 30 points twice this year, once against Tennessee, once against Vanderbilt. She's led the team in scoring all but six times this season. And he's even had a triple-double. 20 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists against Northwestern State. And she has 20 points today. Cuts it back to single digits, 49-41. And the one thing, when you play against a team that has a player like that, she's going to get her points just like somebody like Tamika Ketchings. And, but Tennessee has more versatility. When you're defending a team that has a great score, you're going to let them get their points. But if nobody else scores in double figures, you've basically done a pretty good job against them. Coach Foster of Vanderbilt had an interesting thing to say last night. He said, Tennessee's got three players that if you put them all on different teams, it would make three top ten teams in the country. And they're all on the floor at the same time. Mills underneath. Well, that was a pretty interesting way to put the impact that those three players have on this team. Well, there's no question. They would be contenders no matter where they go. Eight-point game again. Catchings has been most of the offense here in the last couple of minutes for Tennessee, and Holzclaw couldn't handle the rebound. Out of bounds to the Tide with 8.25 left. Alabama's right in this game. They have to take care of the basketball. One of the keys, Rick Moody said, and they've got to finish these shots, these plays. Tasha Mills came up with a loose ball, made an easy layup the last time down the floor. Alabama would love to spot up Goss for a three again. She's hit a couple here. Here goes a three. It's not Goss, and it's an air ball thrown up there by Caruth. Down court the other way. Catchings! It came out. And now a foul underneath. And give credit to Clement following up. Catching's a pretty good finisher, misses the layup. Caruth came into the game the other night with six of three from three-point range. She had to hustle down on defense, could not catch Catching's, and just nails Clement. Says, you're not getting that shot uh -huh. off. But Caruth basically in the game, the 5'9 freshman, trying to hit some three-pointers three -pointers for this Alabama team. Well, that's first point of the ball game for the free throw line as Latrice Jones comes back in. And Nicole Carruth, who's called for that foul, a uh, quick exit. First two for Clement. Makes it double digits again with exactly eight minutes left. Tennessee by 10. New from Maven Videos, shooting for success from DePaul women's basketball head coach Doug Bruno. Learn the steps to mastering a rock-solid shot, the basics of the triple threat, and the strategies to help you increase your offensive output. This video is not available in any stores. To order, call 1-888-44-MAVEN. That's 1-888-44-MAVEN. Play the game without any doubts. Hey, guys. Jose, Tony, what are you doing? I'm just schooling, cruising, button, some net fighting, that boy. Oh, please tell me you saved that program before you open the game. That program contained Vitale's Com, the database containing the entire lineup and stats for every single NCAA basketball team in the new season. Oh, well, you know, Berman and Myers were in here before us. Yeah, they said it was cool. Championship week heats up, and the Colonial Athletic Association's a chance at the dance. Then the Sunbelt Semis. Colonial Athletic Association Championship at 7, Sunbelt Semis at 9.30, tonight on ESPN2. Tennessee by 10 with eight minutes left. Well, Pat went in the locker room when they lost to Alabama. Well, I shouldn't say didn't lose, but when the last time they played Alabama, there were strong plays like that from Shamiko Holzclaw, but also strong play from players that have stepped up as far as rebounding, and that's been a key for Tennessee. And Pat Who's your friend? In, I know it. Kanga Roo, KK. This is Kanga carrying Kyra because Kyra Elsie, when she went out against Alabama, 
Pat, some have felt that the biggest loss would be on the rebounding area, so this is what they give the players <laughs> each game, their little mascot, on who's going to step up on the rebounding end, and that's KK. I don't know if your Drew's is into those things as Reese is. I think Reese has 96 of those at home. <laughs> no, we don't have that many, but we have a lot of stuffed animals, that's for sure. So that's King carrying Kyra. Right now, Tennessee carrying the game by 10 with 7.56. Remaining in the ball game on their way maybe to the SEC championship and they hope a third straight national championship last year They lost 10 games. And that's what's amazing to think of they went 29 and 10 They were only 8 and 4 in the SEC this year perfect so far And this year has been so much fun is what Pat Summit and her staff has said that the players are enjoying themselves They're easygoing kids, but the biggest joy has been that she has not had to coach them as far as intensity. They are competitive. They come out every night as far as not only game situations, but practice to play hard. Jeter, a nice move down low. I guess she shuffled her feet in that low post. Turns it back over to Alabama. Brittany Elsie saying, somebody get open. He's out. Here's Goss, who has only two field goals, but they were only, but they were both uh, rather three-pointers. They're well aware of her presence on the outside and timeout taken 20 second timeout taken by Alabama Crimson Tide has played this game with some foul trouble especially Tasha Mills who had two early and then two quick ones in the second half that's taken away her effectiveness defensively Duncan Candy and Jones all with three Holesclaw and Jeter likewise with three and there's we were talking about Ann and I were talking about Tasha Mills today celebrating her birthday she is five years old. She's a, a leap year baby born February 29th of 1976. So seeing uh, we skipped a 29th this year. Actually, she is 22 years old today, officially. Also, uh, another Juco transfer from Trinity Valley where Shalonda Ennis went to school and they were national champs. And Tasha Mills was junior college player of the year. She played like it early in this game, a rebounding and shot blocking standpoint, but that foul trouble has killed her today. Seven and a half minutes left. Brad Nessler and Myers with you. 53 43. Shot clock at five. Goss had it blocked by Ketchings. What you call blocking a shot 21 feet away from the hoop. Ketchings has 55 blocks. You talk about Jeter. Ketchings gets up there too. Bum at the left hander. Got it. The defense sets up the offense. A big block by Ketchings and Clement, who has not been looking to take the outside shot very often, which led Cardinal O'Hara last year with over 2,000 points. Actually, he broke Will Chamberlain's record That's in the Philadelphia right. area. Stood for 40 years. Candy trying to answer on the other end. Rimmed out Mills, the rebound, had it stripped from behind, and Ketchings. I thought was going to lose it on the baseline, but she got there in time. And that's the intensity. Tennessee throws it away, but they have pulled out to their biggest lead of the ball game, up by 13. Tamika Ketchings comes out of nowhere with the long reach, and they've got on one of the stats that we have where the three players, Randalls, Ketchings, and Holesclaw, have the long arms with Clement wide open, and then the hustle play by Catches to get that ball and come back down and almost gets it on the offensive end again. A block three on one end, a converted three on the other, and now Catchings just rips it away from Ezel, and the officials are going to have a chat about it. Well, they're not going to call something, are they? I think they are. Oh, boy. And I think Rick's going to get moody right about now. Well, it's a good tie-up by Tamika Catchings and... Brittany Zell is right there. They're holding on to her. She's just thrown down the ground. So how do you call some? Just because a body flies and there's contact doesn't mean there's always a foul. Oh, and we have one upset head coach. I don't think I blame him. Timeout. 6.02 left in the ball game. How geologist Ted Barton eats a Reese's Crunchy Cookie Cup. First, I take a core sample. Next, I examine the strata. 
And then I digest the findings. Chocolate, peanut butter, and a cookie. There's no wrong way to eat a Reese's Crunchy cookie cup. From the family of minivans that have won more total awards than any other, with an available fourth sliding door, standard air conditioning, roomy seven passenger seating, and easy out roller seats. With all this, you may think it's one of the most expensive minivans you can buy, but it's not. It's the lowest priced minivan you can buy. Plymouth Voyager. Now get $1,000 cash back on Grand Voyager, only at your Chrysler and Plymouth dealer. get a cup of coffee? Lee Riveted, the new look of Lee. How a secret agent eats a Reese's peanut butter cup. I slip in unnoticed, penetrate the defenses, secure the discs, then destroy the evidence. There's no wrong way to eat a Reese's. Moody had to be restrained by his assistant coaches as we went to that timeout with 6.02 left. This is what got his ire up. Well, he's way out of position, too, on the other side of the court. There you see Ezell loses the ball. She's going after it. After it. Not much contact, but the contact going down on the ground. And so he, all he sees from the other side is Ezell going down. It looks like Ketchens is really nailing her, but there's not much contact by either player. Rick's blood pressure has gone down a little bit since the timeout. I'm not sure that Brittany's has. 6.02 left. It's a 13-point game, and Ketching's on the other end now at the free throw line. Rick Moody's got to be happy about his team, though, the way have, they have come out and, and the game plan as far as taking the air out of the ball, slowing it down, walking it up. Tennessee has forced some turnovers, but they've done a good job on the boards, and, but they have not made a lot of easy shots. They missed them. Here's the makeup call That's on Shamik four. Holstlaw. That'll be, four. <laughs> That'll be four on Holstlaw. Oh, I shouldn't say that. That was as, just as cheap on one end as on the other, so we'll go the other way and shoot free throw. Holstlaw now in foul trouble as well. Dominic Canton coming into this game needed 41 points to move into second place as the all-time scorer. Nisi Johnson is number one. Nobody's gonna catch her. She has over 2,100 points and also the leading. Catching one of the rising stars in college basketball. Candy already is one. 21 for Dominique Candy. I did say Candy, didn't I? Mm -hmm. I can't remember. <laughs> 57 to 45. Time running out on Alabama to try to pull an upset, but Tennessee looking at 33 and 0. Randall has really struggled with her shot today. Let's see if Alabama looks to keep taking the outside shot against the zone of Tennessee's. Candy kicks outside. Goss works for a 15-footer and got it. Bucket's a bucket. Two points is better than none. Really good execution by Alabama that time. Tennessee worked on this play in practice today and on sliding on defense, but Alabama was very patient and good passes. Catching's got a pick from Randall. All the way around the lane. Leaves it for Jolly. Ten on the shot clock. Randall from 14. Got it. Up 12 again, and we're under five minutes. Tennessee looking for its eighth SEC tournament title since 1980. Goss, not quite enough room to launch that three. And then an offensive foul. Stuck that elbow out. Rick Moody just a little frustrated, but you just got to stay with your team. You got to look at the positives and get it right back. 
even if they lose and right now they're 425 from doing so they look good enough to make some noise in the tournament Alabama that is Tennessee will be the team everybody will be gunning at gunning for in the tournament catching missed outside and can't either rebound got someone on the side just kind of rolling her eyes and would have been a good shot if it went in she got to sit down and relax in the second half last night against Vanderbilt it was pretty interesting to watch she walked up and down with the sport coat off the whole first half and got to relax the whole second half Mills they could have used a little more of her being on the court like that in this game but foul trouble has prevented it especially in the second half it's prevented it but also in the first half with only two points you've got to go to a player like that a little bit more give credit to Tennessee as far as their defense maybe defending Mills as far as not getting the basketball but when you've got a player that size and can create a lot of space down low you've got to try and get her the ball and the birthday girl gets a three-point play out of it and nobody back on defense Kelly Jolly was the only one back there. What a sneaky play, Very Kelly sneaky. Jolly. Goss, too strong. Candy got her hand on it. Trying to save it, stepped on the sideline. Now to 331 left, Holzclaw will check back in. Playing with four fouls. Peter goes out. So it's Clement, Jolly, Randall, catching, and Holzclaw on the floor for Tennessee. And Randall and Holzclaw going inside. Now Ketchings going inside. All three can rotate. Holzclaw, that great looking jump shot. That one was off the mark off the left side, though. Normally smooth from out there and fresh off the bench, almost missed everything. Danny trying to work a little one-on-one -on -one against Randall. Giselle needs some help. Now she pushes one up there off the glass. A dipsy doodle just ducking underneath the defense. Sixty-one fifty-two, back to single digits, which is how they played them in the regular season. They need a couple defensive stops. They approach the two and a half minute mark. In the paint, Holzclaw didn't get the roll. Randall got the rebound though. Maybe a little too quick. I'm putting it back up there. Randall five ten gets a lot of rebounds for her size, almost five a game. She comes out of nowhere, but Alabama on the offensive end. And they're going to take a 20. Or is it a full timeout? Alabama. Timeout taken by Alabama with two minutes and 17 seconds remaining in the ball game. They're hanging tough with Tennessee. They trail by nine. At a time like this, there are several things you might find useful. Some more useful than others. to build, test, and manage business software, four out of five of the world's largest corporations rely on CompuWare. What do you need most? Still using Zero to call people collect? Hello? Stop! It's expensive. What to do? Dial 1-800-COLLECT. Dialing 1-800-COLLECT saves the people you call lots of money. Hello. Hi, Grandma. Oh. A regular collect call that costs $675, costs only $289 with 1-800-COLLECT. What a deal! It's so easy! Dial 1-800-COLLECT today and save. Our Chrysler storyline of this one, Alabama, too many turnovers, obviously. Candy, though, has held up her end 22 and 7. And Holzclaw, 22.7 rebounds. Catchings has 14 and 9. Tennessee getting to the free throw line and Pat Summit and Shemequa Holzclaw really have a special relationship, but they have the highest respect, but she's like, no. <laughs> well, after she came back in, she sat down with foul trouble with four personals. Has come back in and missed both her field goals since she re-entered and uh, lead with those two misses. 
has gone back down to single digits at nine. And the one thing about Pat Summit, she has she has mellowed out in the sense that she talks to her players. She lets them know how she feels. If they question her, that's great, but we are going to talk this thing out. But lots of times it's like, this is the way we do it, ladies. <laughs> I'm not sure that Sports Illustrated article would indicate that. It's uh, having been around Pat, you've been around her a lot. As Ezel hits another one off the glass. She seemed a little more like a tyrant in that article than she is in real life, I think, but uh, that's just my opinion. I haven't had the opportunity to read the Sports Illustrated article yet, but she also has her book coming out and also an HBO special. The book comes out March 16th and HBO special March 26th, so she's got everything going from last year. Randall had it going on the backdoor cut. Six points in this half, nine for the game for Samika, and it's 50, uh, 63 to 54. Time running out on Alabama, under a minute and a half. Mills, nice feed down low to Duncan. And that's what Alabama has not done. They've got, not had gotten the ball to Tasha Mills. That time she cut up to the high post and left the baseline wide open for her teammates to cut, or even when she's down low. They've got to get her more involved. Tennessee. Not much time left either. Tennessee going to spread it out. No 10 second call in the backcourt in women's basketball. So that's why uh, Jolly had the opportunity to waste some time in the backcourt. Here's Randall. She walked, yes. Pat Summit, Reach for the Summit is her book coming out. And it's really a great, great book. You talk about Pat Riley and Rick Pitino coming out. That's really the first one, as far as a woman, there's the SI cover, as far as a woman coming out, not just for sports, but for anything, as far as a, a mom or any business people, male or female, to motivate you. Mills underneath. And there's great motivation right there, as far as Tasha Mills going after the basketball. Alabama not giving up. Only down five, they take a 20-second timeout. By the way, Pat Summit with that cover of Sports Illustrated becomes the first female coach ever to grace the cover of Sports Illustrated. We'll also talk about the HBO special coming out. The premiere, the world premiere is March 9th in Knoxville. And then it They'll will... They'll have a crowd for that one. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and then March 26th, everybody will get to see it. But it's about last year's Cinderella story. And as you said, they had 10 losses. Who would have thought yeah. they would they would have been the NCAA champions? And this year, with all the talent, a lot of people expect them to win it. And who knows? There's always that chance of being knocked off. Alabama is out of timeouts. So without fouling, they can't stop it again. But Tennessee takes one after they have a look at the defensive configuration of the Crimson Tide with 41.9 remaining. Less than 42 seconds away from an SEC tournament championship for Tennessee. In the Charlestown Register tomorrow, they won't say the team missed the winning shot. They won't say the team made the winning shot. Just hope they spell your name right. Pro basketball star Jennifer Azy spends 40 minutes destroying her hair and 90 seconds bringing it back with Pert Plus. More than a shampoo, it conditions too. How? As you shampoo, the conditioners stay suspended. As you rinse, they go to work, giving you great hair simply. Perfect for Jennifer, because she wants great looking hair, but she'd rather be living in it than working on it. Wouldn't you? Pert Plus, simply great hair, simply. Well, the Crimson Tide and the Lady Volunteers have battled. Still a five point game with 41.9 left. Alabama has lost the last 19 straight times that these two teams have played, 25 and 2, but who knows with this much time they could turn it around. They held them to a single digit victory earlier in the regular season. They have the same thing working here. Right now they're thinking upset though if they can somehow come up with a turnover. Otherwise, they're going to have to send Tennessee to the free throw line and hope that way. But they. I was going to say, eventually, you got to stop the clock. Right. They had 10 seconds go off. Before Goss was able to come up with the foul. 
Tennessee is 17 of 27 today from the free throw line. Take a line for Tennessee, number 24. They have not shot well. Catching two in the first half did not shoot well. Better in the second half. Tamika is six out of nine from the stripe so far today. Has 14 points. She has the same number she had the first go-around with Alabama now. She had 15 points in that regular season matchup. And we talked about her now being the highest scoring freshman at Tennessee, breaking Shemekwa Holsclaw's record. Shemekwa is 583 points, and Tamika coming into this game had 584, also averaging just under 18 points a game. Talk so much about Pat being on Sports Illustrated. Shemekwa Holsclaw is going to be in the March issue of Ebony Magazine. So when you've got the number one team in the country and you're about to be 33 and all, everybody wants to write stories about you. Black staff, 18.2 seconds left. Catchings goes down in a heap down there trying to work for that rebound. Tasha Mills really missing a chance, had that layup, and it didn't fall for her. Catchings a tough player. I know she's coming up limping a little bit, hurt, grimacing in the face, but she's one of the toughest kids I've seen. I call her level. Alabama is down to 18.2 left, and they trail by seven. They lob it to Mills. Nice shot. They needed a lot more Tasha offensively in the first half. Now Duncan fouls Randall. And Randall pulls up, looks maybe like a cramp. Everybody limping with 15.2 left except Dan and I. You're basically wearing shoes for the first time today, too. We're in the good seats. <laughs> So Randall steps to the free throw line. <laughs> she can hit double digits if she hits this one. Don't forget, Colonial Athletic Association Championship will be coming up next. Richmond and UNC Wilmington. Glenn Elmore and Dwayne Staff standing by for that one. The guys will be along with us in about uh, five minutes here. Second one off the mark, but it's kept alive by Randall, and that should just about do it. Jolly cross courts it, final 10 seconds, five point game. Randall! That puts the orange topping on this game. They call the foul on Tamika Ketchings. 2.2 seconds left, a three point shot. Dominique Canty will get three free throws. Ketchings looked like she didn't want to block it, but she was already up in the air and went for it. Well, it's still not quite over. Pat Summit saying, get the ball back, just hold it. Dominique Candy with 21. 22. All SEC performer. Over her average now. Got the roll on the second. She's just really been a lot of fun to watch in this SEC conference. Doesn't get a lot of credit Alabama as far as maybe notoriety. And how, do you, how does a kid from Chicago get to Alabama? Rick Moody was saying, lucky. Yeah. That's going to do it. Tennessee Lady Balls have won another SEC tournament title. They're eight since 1980. But they had to work for it today, that's for sure. Alabama hung tough. Played them down to the wire. There's two very good coaches and two very good teams, but one is still unbeaten at 33-0. Final score, Tennessee 67, Alabama 63. We'll be back in Columbus in a moment. Life is unpredictable. Sometimes you need health insurance. Sometimes you need life insurance. And sometimes... Simone, è per te. You need investments for the future. So at the Conseco Companies, our goal is to help you protect wealth, create wealth for life. There are cars that are built to appeal to your passionate side and to your practical side. For the passionate, cab-forward design, argent aluminum wheels, air, multi-valve V6, and at no extra charge, a new leather-trimmed interior with an eight-way power driver's seat. For the practical side, the new 
Chrysler Cirrus LXI is just $18,995. Loaded. Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. Hi. Matt, got your email. Vancouver? Genius. Passed it on to Epps. He's running it through the Northwest. Hey, Matt. Ideas are hit in the Northwest. I've got purchasing checking suppliers. Uh-uh. You want it up top. Client briefing. Your Vancouver idea. Want to take your business to the next level? Tennessee had to fight for it, but they win it by four. And Ann Myers is with the coach and the star on the floor. Dad, just talk a little bit about how it feels right now winning the SEC tournament and regular season and how the team played today. Well, I, I, we've had better days. You have to give out Alabama a lot of credit. Um, I didn't think we came out with the energy that they had and finally matched some intensity there, but I'm proud of our basketball team. A win's a win. I'd rather uh, just win ugly and move on. Congratulations. Thanks. Shamik, we'll talk a little, bit, a little bit about the play. You really stepped your game up today. I'm definitely. I've never won an SEC championship because when we played Alabama my freshman year and won, I got hurt early in the game. So this is something in my career I really wanted. Me and Kelly was talking about it all day. Well, you got one. Congratulations. Brad, back to you. And we had our congratulations. Final score 67-63. For Ann Myers, I'm Brad Nessler. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports, Tennessee, the SEC tournament champions one more time. Colonial Athletic Association Championship is next.